here, we're not living in the 70s. So I'm going to tell you what you need to know about that decade. One, Americans embraced macrame. <laughs> if you don't know what that is, ask those of us who are older. We had it on our walls. We made plant hangers, sometimes with beads. We liked our appliances, avocado green, and harvest gold. He knows what I'm talking about. Uh, the Beatles split up. The voting age was lowered from 21 to 18. And for those of us who are mathematically challenged, the pocket calculator was invented. <laughs> now, the 70s were important to me. It was a very important decade because I learned a couple of really good lessons. In the early 70s, um, I just had a brain fart. Um, and, okay, so in the early 70s, thank you, whoever was. <laughs> thank you very much. I really did have a big brain fart. It just went away. Um, wow. Sorry, guys. Thank you. Um, okay, so this is, oh my gosh, it's back. Thank you. Woo! <laughs> That's from the 60s. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not talk about that. Okay, so the early 70s, this is why it's important. It's when I first realized that I was just a little bit different from other girls. Well, they wanted to be princesses and ballerinas. I wanted to be Gladys Knight and have my own hips. <laughs> <laughs> while, while they said yeah, he would come back. While they were watching Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, I was obsessed with American Bandstand and Soul Train. In fact, I chose the television shows to watch based solely on the quality of the theme song. <laughs> Did it have a beat and can you dance to it? <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you is that I was predisposed genetically, maybe. I was attracted to dance. I was born to boogie. <laughs> now, some of you might be asking yourself, or even the person next to you, was she really born this way, or did she choose this lifestyle? <laughs> well, I, don't really, I don't have any science to back it up, but I can tell you, it really shouldn't have mattered, but it did, and here's why. I was raised in a tiny town in Oklahoma called Fairview. It was right in the middle of the Bible Belt and Tornado Alley. <laughs> so half the time I was scared to death about being sucked in the sky and blown away to Kansas. <laughs> and the other half I was scared to death of going straight to hell. <laughs> hell, Kansas. Those were my options. <laughs> but then as I got older, I realized there was something else to fear, and that was dancing. We didn't have any school dances in my town, none, because a lot of the churches believed that dancing was sinful. And the word on the street was that it can lead to pregnancy. <laughs> this was really bad news for someone like me. Because I love to dance. I danced all the time. I danced in my bedroom when everybody thought I was asleep. I danced in the bathroom, sometimes before and after taking a bath. I danced in the basement, sometimes with other people. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Luckily for me, I was raised in a family of Methodists. <laughs> and in, a, in my town, that was synonymous for liberal. <laughs> so as I got older, I developed a sixth sense. You know, I could, I could see other people, and I knew if they were dancing on the down low. <laughs> I called it my suedar. <laughs> Thank you. So, so in the later 70s, two things that happened, um, it changed my life forever. One, we got a new youth minister at the First United Methodist Church in Fairview, Oklahoma. His name was Jimmy. He was suave, sophisticated, we called him a foreigner. He was from New Jersey. <laughs> and the other thing that happened is the worldwide phenomenon we know as Saturday Night Fever. Right now, okay, I was too young at the time to see it. I had the 8-track. But has anybody watched it lately? And I know you're not supposed to answer, technically. I rented it a couple years ago. And let me just tell you, if there was a plot, I have no idea. <laughs> if there was something, a storyline, no idea. Do you know why? Because all I could do was focus on John Travolta's crotch. <laughs> All the men were the 
tight pants. Ow. <laughs> so I did, I did some research. This may or may not ruin your evening. <laughs> there is a term for the male version of camel toe. <laughs> it's called moose knuckle. <laughs> I am sorry, and you're welcome. <laughs> So, okay, so back to Jimmy. So Jimmy comes to town and he can't believe there's no school dances. He just can't believe it. And he says, by golly, we're going to start having dances in the basement of the First United Methodist Church in Fairview, Oklahoma. And we're going to invite everyone to come. All the students can come. We thought, really, no way. Jimmy had big balls. <laughs> he did not wear tight pants. So we started meeting in the basement once a week. He got a, um, you know, one of those books, How to Learn Disco in 10 Easy Lessons. And we pull, he pulled out a chart. It looked like a football play. He put it on the wall. But the problem is, on the other wall was a big old portrait of Jesus. <laughs> the more I later learned to call Disco Jesus. <laughs> Imagine how intimidating you've been told that dancing is sinful, but we're practicing in front of him. And so I was always tempted, you know, we're doing this, and I was always tempted to do this. <laughs> it was both a sign of the cross and protection from lightning. <laughs> so we all got ready, we were excited, and the first event came around, and it was after our football game, and we had our disco, you know, clothing on, and we had mood uh, lighting and punch and cookies. And we all start dancing, it's just us Methodists, right? Yeah. And we thought, is anybody going to come to this? And if they do, will burning torches be involved? <laughs> we didn't know what to expect, so we start dancing, and pretty soon after about the second or third dance, the, up the stairs, the door opened to the parking lot. And we all froze. <laughs> <laughs> and slowly, but surely, down the stairs, like a trickling line of melted ice cream. It was all vanilla. <laughs> the non-Methodist came into the room. Well, Jimmy worked his magic because we didn't know what to do. And before you know it, we were all dancing together on the same dance floor. Nobody died. Nobody got hit by lightning. Nobody got pregnant. <laughs> Happened to some later, but it had nothing to do with dancing. <laughs> and I became hopeful that night because I thought, if we can all dance together under the same roof, maybe one day we can be out in the open, <laughs> dancing in public under the stars. <laughs> Years later, I would look back, and there are two main lessons I learned from that. One, I don't think Jesus cares if you go dance. <laughs> and number two, unless I missed a really big news story, we're all human, we're all flawed. And I don't think another human has the authority to tell me that the way that I was born and the depth of my soul is wrong. So this is my advice. The next time somebody tells you that the way that you are the depth of your soul is wrong, you tell them this. Go take it up with Jesus, baby, because I'm going dancing. <laughs>